and welcome to Property Mastermind Podcast, episode 111. Wow, very exciting. This week, how communicating effectively will impact your property development success. And Bob and I will unpack some things you really need to do when it comes to communication and how it will determine whether you're successful or not. We've got some great stories, we've got some great tips. So let's jump on into episode 111. Episode 111, hello, Hilary Saxton and Bob Anderson in the Property Mastermind podcast, how communicating effectively will determine your property development success. This week, giving away our book to Wasi. Wasi, I've spoken to you a couple of times in the last week or so. I will make sure this book comes out to you. Remember, if you'd like a copy of that book, share the podcast with somebody, take a screenshot, comment, let us know you did. You'll definitely go in the draw. You'll more than likely win it. So you're welcome to do that and we would love that. Another thing, if you're enjoying this podcast, we would so appreciate that you share it with a friend. How can people learn or learn more from us or understand how we can help you if they don't know about it? We've had some fantastic uh, podcast episodes and we would love for you to share that. So yeah, do that. Anyway, that's enough from me about the get stuff, organized stuff. Let's (laughs) go with you, Bob. What's your fun fact for the week? Oh, I I, I think uh, based on my efforts on Sunday, where you and I went fishing twice. We went out in the morning. Uh, then we went out of the evening. We went fishing. Don't go fishing with a Kiwi woman. <laughs> unless you want to come second at fishing. I got Ooh. flogged. <laughs> not that it's a competition. Everything's a competition with you. What do you want to do? Uh, no, it's, it's not really a competition with me. I'm happy to be out there. At least that's what I say. Yeah. No, uh, it was great. We did some great fishing. We did. It was my oh, it was my second time night fishing actually, but my first time night fishing where we are. Yeah, a little bit a little bit weird when you're out mm. on the water at night, not knowing what you're seeing or doing. Hey. Yeah, a little bit of moonlight helped though. That was good, but. Um, yeah. And I, I had a headlamp on and I've got a bruise on my <laughs> forehead from it. I just had it too tight. You should wear a beanie under it like I did. Oh, I couldn't find my beanie there and you yeah, go. all of that. Anyway, anyway, I'm used to it. Yeah, it was good though. Hmm. Actually, we need to eat that fish. That Today. second lot. We ate the first lot. Okay, poor communication, hmm. Bob, leads to poor collaboration. Yes. And it is important to understand communication and the and how it will impact your success and you can learn to be better at it so let's just talk about communication why we need it with property development mm. and I, I'm, i'll just jump into you first okay. of all with property development and it involves coordinating people you always say that's mm. people or a process we talk about it at a master class you're welcome to join that 29th of september that's free but bob can you just maybe unpack that a wee bit, the, the, the professionals you need to talk to and why that's important, why you communicate, yeah. how you computer, communicate is important there. Well, I often say that one of our keys to success is to have a good team around us, you know, and we're talking about professional people, we're talking about consultants, we're talking about you know, people like accountants and lawyers, you know, in the development process, we're talking about architects, you know, town planners, surveyors, engineers, all those sorts of people. They're critical to our success because we we rely on their knowledge. Mm. You know, we rely on the fact that they they went to university for for several years. They've attained degrees in what they do. They've been out in the marketplace learning and you know building their experience. So they're a very key component to our success mm. that they do their job well. But in order for them to do their job well, there needs to be good communication because you can't just Let's say we're going to do a duplex. You can't just go to an architect and say, can you whip me up some good plans for a duplex? <laughs> well, you can. And, and leave it at that. <laughs> well, you can, but don't know how far <laughs> that's going to go. So they need, they need some direction and, and it needs to come from you. Well, you know, where is it? Uh, what size are they? What, what sort of features? How many bedrooms? You know, all these sorts of things, which as a developer you would know because you're in your marketplace and you're seeing what's selling, you're seeing what buyers want, you're seeing what other developers are building. So you you know this, you know, it's part of your due diligence, it's part of your market research. So you have to relay that to the architect and then there's a there's a brief, I mean, within our course we've got, you know, an architect's brief where you fill in all the bits and pieces, but communication, not and that's only 
in, in this example of an architect, that's only to get them going. But then you've got ongoing communication. And, oh, Bob, and I just have to interrupt yeah. there. You just said some really useful things that I wasn't even expecting to come up in this podcast, but a couple of things. One is obviously you have to know your stuff, so you need to know what you need to ask because ultimately they are the they are the person that's had all the education, but you need to know that they've ticked off everything mm. you need to know. You can't always just trust what somebody says. No, so no they that, don't know the market like you know it. it. Yeah, and then the other thing that you said inside that just brief statement, I was like, whoa, there's two in there, was you... You probably need to articulate it well enough to be professional. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a pretty good example when you're talking about an architect. You could go and talk about a structural engineer. Mm. Now, there's not a lot of communication between a structural engineer and yourself other than uh, once you've got the plans organised, the architect's plans the way you want them, the structural engineer will take over and work on those plans. You'll get a a soil test so that they can work out the type of ground and then they can design the, the footings and the slab. And so it's very technical, it's very highly mathematical mm. what a structural engineer does. And so the communication there isn't so much in the same way it is with an architect where you're steering them around in, in the right direction. Uh, it's, it's, as I said, it's, it's very, more directive. It's very it? directive, but yeah. you need to choose the right structural engineer. You need to have time frames that are set. You need to uh, let the structural engineer know you're working to time frames and they must complete their work in that time and you need to communicate along the way to make sure that's happening. So there is communication, not so much direction, mm. but you can't just appoint them and go to sleep and wait for them to reappear somewhere with a finished product. So you're talking more in the, in, in the lines of what needs to be communicated. And I think I was going along the lines for, which is all of this is great, mm. is how you communicate. Yeah. Uh, so that's the, And those two need to intertwine. Mm. You need to connect, uh, communicate, connect to the person in their language, but yeah. with what needs to be done, said, with mm. time frames, which it, it loses that, yeah, cheers, mate, can I have that next week? It has to be a bit more professional for some people, doesn't it? Depending on what their oh, yeah. role is. Yeah, definitely. There's a fair bit of latitude in the, the example we chose with the with the architect. Yes. Now I'm going to make a blanket statement here. And Do it's, it. But it, and it's not true at all. But there are some architects out there that are a little bit precious. Not uh, you, not you architects that are listening right no, now. Though. No one who's listening. No, those and, other and, ones. And, and a little bit egotistical. And yep. look, every developer or builder who's been around for a while has, has found those. And it's often when they don't listen to your brief, they, they've got a particular agenda on how they want to design things. And it's almost like they're trying to win an award for their design which will mean it'll probably cost you a lot more money and you won't get it back necessarily. So, so that when choosing the right architect, and this, this comes back to communication as well, is to choose one, ideally one who designs for quite a lot of developers and builders and who's prepared to, to listen to what, to what you need. But you, you have to relay it mm, properly. Do you know what you just said, two other things there? One, you have to make sure that they are listening to you mm. because some people don't listen. Uh, I'm a little bit guilty sometimes no. of that. Not when I'm coaching, but as a human, you know, how many times you say, would you like a coffee? And then you have to ask them again. It's like simple. They would have said yes or no. Uh, if you haven't listened to, to, to people's answer. But also, Bob, uh, something else you said in there was if they had an ego. So they're in that for their own agenda, not for you. So are they doing what you want? Hmm. And this is not just an architect. Let's, let's not just pick on them. No, it's no. everybody. But that was a good point that you brought up about the architects wanting to win awards. Didn't hmm. think of that ever. So that's a great tip there. But, yeah, I suppose... Oh, it could be others in there. You know, there, there's all sorts of people who have... A, I mean, lawyers as well. Um, you know, you have, to, you have to instruct. There's a thing called... The client instructs the lawyer. Mm. The lawyer doesn't can offer advice, but he doesn't instruct the client. So, mm. so there's all these relationships with different people, you know, even with accountants for structure, setting up structures and that sort of thing. Uh, marketers, communication with uh, agents. Now, there's a big one. Mm. Um, in agents, let's say, when we're looking for a site, 
the sort of communication that might form a relationship. Now, that's what you're brilliant at because, I mean, I mean, you've studied all this, the whole psychology, the personality profiling and all that, so you're way ahead of me on, on that. But I think you've got a bit of life experience though, Bob. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. Been, well, probably. I've, had, I've had a bit. I've, I've been living for a while, <laughs> if that's what you're trying to say. But even uh, when you're out there looking for sites, to form a relationship with, with some agents is very beneficial because it can bring you to the top of the pile when there's mm. a deal around, or buyer's agents for that mm. matter, you know. That, that communication, it, it, to me, the communication can lead, if done properly, to a relationship. Oh, and I see some fabulous relationships in our community, and I'm going to say it again, I say it, we've said it so many times. Connie, yep. you are such a great communicator. And I think... What you get when, you ha- when you're a great communicator is you form good relationships, like Bob mm, said, mm. but you get a bit of leeway with stuff. Everyone's prepared to go, oh, okay, it's not so black and white. If you are black and white, you know, just abrupt, hard work, people are kind of oh, like, yeah. nah, that's the rules, not doing it. But when you can communicate, well, you know somebody else, Craig and Tia Peaver. Yeah. They are, as a couple, mm. great communicators. They've both got strengths. They know what they are, and I think they work toward great that. Great team. Yeah, great team. So I, something else that I thought of, Bob, just mm. in communication and when it's vital for property development is if you're looking for investors. Oh, never more so than when you're looking for investors. Yeah. Yeah, well, we've uh, we've seen all sorts of – I mean, we've done a lot with investors. You, you handle a lot of our investment side of things, but – I've also seen some personality traits that aren't conducive to yep. getting you know, investors on board. And what's interesting is when you understand people's personality traits is that we can learn to behave differently. Myself, I know I will take relationships pretty quickly to casual, mm. but I can be extremely professional but my go-to is to just get it to a level where I'm comfortable being there I'm, and I'm all about just being me. But I think if if I know when I need to step it up and think, no, Hillary, this is a professional environment, be more professional. And I do see that with, you know, when you're, when you're speaking with investors, if you can read the person, if they want to go to a more casual uh, encounter, I won't say relationship, encounter, mm. then you can go there. And it's the same as uh, if, if they want to be up high-level professional, you can tell because they would just speak in basically bullet points and they yeah. want facts. Yep. But if they start being a bit more casual, then it's time mm. to go with them where they want to go. Mm. Because if you are mm. struggling to get investors, <clears throat> maybe you need to think about, uh, is it you? And there is a lot you can do because we can all learn to do what we need to do. Mm-hmm. You know how some personalities can be a little bit prickly? And mm. they're, not, they're not bad people at all No, once you get to know them. But externally, remember, first appearances count. Oh, um, don't they? Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking of someone that probably can be a little bit matter-of-fact appear to be a little bit cold. I mean, there's just... We've, we've got some in our families. <laughs> oh. um, that, that can be quite off-putting. And, like, they can be a little bit abrupt. Mm. I think you you will get away with being like that if you're communicating with somebody else that's like that. Mm. But pretty much around 70%, it's just over 68 or something, is more likely to have your personality, Bob, which mm, is just... Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, they're more likely to not like that. Mm. They, won't, they won't like that um, less mm. people orientated, more process orientated, abrupt. You, Proce- someone like process yourself... Process is fine, but a bit abrupt. Yeah. But if that's their natural... Mm, yeah. Mm. You, I mean, and you, and you wouldn't pull them up, but your personality is more likely to go, oh, okay, okay, and, and just back off. When really we need to understand, to mm. communicate with people, you've got to... You don't we, want investors showing off you. No, you don't. And even we talked before about even though, even if it's written communication, it needs to be professional, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. it you know, whether it's verbal or... I think especially if it's written, it needs to be professional. Yeah. Be very careful what think, you text I, people. I think when you're dealing with investors, you certainly need to have an air of professionalism around you. I think that's really important because people are going to trust you with their money, so that's important. Mm. But how you individually communicate with them, I think, is mm. is exactly what you're saying. But even outside of investors, if we look at 
when we went back and did that <laughs> renovation. When I, oh, yeah. When I dragged you to New Zealand to do a renovation <laughs> with me, Bob. On the tools for Bob a, loved how it. How long was that? Two, uh, three weeks or something? No, it was four six. weeks, six uh, weeks? Oh, well, we had a bit of a holiday. It seems like a year, but it was, yeah. That was just was before the C word. It was six weeks, yeah. But anyway, what... We, we, we arrived just before yep. Christmas and Bob said, well, you're not going to get any tradies. And I said, oh, I'll get tradies. It was like the 20th of December or something. Yeah. I said, no, right. I'll get tradies. And we had a Pulled bathroom. Pulled out your little black book. Yeah. Well, and every tradie I call is there in no time because I have formed that relationship, which is something I do see Connie doing, mm. formed mm. that relationship with those people where – uh, they, I pay them on time. You know, I communicate with them well. I trust what I trust their opinion as well. I don't, mm. you know, I ask them what they think, and I build up that relationship that I'm prepared to to communicate with them how they want to be communicated with, and mm. then they they look after me so mm. well. I was a bit shocked because I'm not used to that. I mean, I don't deal with tradies ideally. As a developer, we deal with a builder, but but I mean. Oh, you're right. I said, look, you're not going to get people over this Christmas New Year break. We're going to like have two two weeks of deadness. And I can remember the electrician coming around, wiring up through the roof. That was Christmas Eve at like 6 p.m. Christmas Eve. He was finishing no his dramas. wiring off. Yeah. The the plumber was doing all the all the kitchen plumbing on Boxing Day, uh, and and on it went. And I, I can remember you slipping out and buying coffees and. Muffins and different things for the Ice paint, because the painters the were there for, for for a while. It was a big painting job, mm. stripping wallpaper, repainting. We we stripped the wallpaper, but they did the painting, and we had to try and pull the timeline in. Yeah, well, they loved you. They'd have walked over hot coals for you. But that's just by having effective communication. So, I'm going to ask the listener now: mm. uh, Is there any part of your property development journey that you think you could improve your communication in? And it could be by looking at the other person and thinking when I communicate with them you got to remember it's always about the person listening so talk in their language do you do that well when you are talking to the person or when you're maybe in written so whether it's texting or emailing or whatever is it professional because that is vital and then do you know what you're asking Hmm. Are you asking the right questions because you're educated enough to know what you need to be asking or you're following a process or whatever that is? I think they're three really important things, Bob. Yep. That Communication is a soft skill that gets overlooked. Oh, yeah. And yet it is something like we just prove that we I can ask people to do things for me around Christmas and they will. And that happens a lot for me. I often get what I want because I will communicate in a way that somebody wants to wants to wants to hear hmm. and that's not that's not tricking people it's understanding that w- the type of person you are like I know my personality style is very strong uh, it's confident it hasn't always been but I, I know who I am so I know that sometimes when I talk to some people I can come across as a little bit threatening or scary and hmm. so I have to make sure that I meet the person you know if I'm talking to a South African male and if there are any of you listening so they're a very strong personality. So it's quite then I have to step up and be my strongest self because that's how they tend to be. Not all, but mm. you know there are these little rules of thumb that you can work by. Yep. What are your thoughts? I, I, I like the uh, South African accent. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I love I love listening to South Africans talk. So I do I. It's really cool. Um, so do I. Yeah. I oh, know. I mean, that's that is the key because we deal with, you know. We might be dealing with 10, 10 different people on a duplex, mm. all varying personalities mm. it, and varying levels of communication as well. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, it is. It's a, it's a big part of it. Do you know, let's take this to another level. I remember a mentoring student I was working with a few years ago and his he didn't know why he was having trouble getting something through council. He could mm. not believe it. It turned out his architect and town planner didn't like each other. No, oh, yeah, and they really need to get on. They need, and, but he didn't realise once he changed architect. Sorry, we're not dumping on the architects, by the way. It just happened to be that. But once he changed, everything was fine. So you know, th- even communication that's not directly with you but impacts you, mm. we don't even think about those sorts of things, do Third we? Party communication, yeah, right? you know, outside of yeah, and it, it took him a while to work that out. I don't even. I don't even know how he did work that out. Maybe he just thought. 
he was taking too long, he'd try something else and... Yeah, there's probably one one party kept blaming the other and he's trying to think, well, who's who's in the wrong and then like, keep trying to dig and, you know, it's all come to the surface, yeah. But. So well, here's some ways to that, that you can improve communication. Number one, hmm. you can, if you struggle, even speaking properly, go to Toastmasters. I'm a Toastmaster, I love it. But it just improves your confidence and you need to be able to confidently communicate with people. <laughs> Perfect example, look at podcast number one, two, three, four and five and then look at these ones. We are different people and for me that's Toastmasters. Number two, you've got to know your stuff. You need to know what you're asking. Hey, You need to mm. be responsible for asking the right questions yep. and saying it well, articulating properly. The next one is you need to practice. You need to practice, practice, practice. When something is uncomfortable and difficult, if you struggle communicating with people, you need to practice. And you need to practice effectively, not just rambling. So it's along the lines of maybe I work on words that I start using. And in this business we do, someone starts using at the end of the day too often. Once you say it, it gets knocked on the head. 100%. 100% is gone from this place. What's another thing we've to be, got? To be honest. To be honest. These are all things that we have worked pretty hard to eliminate because they're just lazy slang. <laughs> I'm working on another one right now. I'm not going to tell you because if I say it, you'll hear it and then it becomes really obvious. Uh, I used to have really as a bad one, mm. and I finally got rid of that. They're an early podcast, so I picked those up. But you've got to practice yeah. it. And then another way to practice is networking. And networking people get afraid of or but they will shy back from. A great way to network is just start with one-on-one -on -one and go for a coffee with somebody. And at the end of 30 minutes or whatever, so you're not stuck there for two or three hours, you just say, oh, okay, well, that's great. Great networking, great catch up. Let's do this again sometime. Or do you have anybody else I can connect with? I could connect you with somebody. So that is another way to improve communication skills. So there's, so far, Toastmasters is one way. Uh, know your stuff, practice, networking, and then, and that's one-on-one. -on -one. And then you could go to full networking like to hmm. different events. And it doesn't have to be property development. Remember, if you're looking for an investor, it could be a local knitting or reading club. Who knows? Um, Bridge club. <laughs> yeah, anywhere. So it's, it's a skill we need to practice. It's, you know, we don't get better at anything until we do it more and more often. So you have to be, you have to look at yourself, you have to lift, listen to, your, to yourself, and you need to practice it. Mm. Have you got anything else on that one, Bob? Anything oh, no, else we can add to? There's probably plenty of good info on the, you know, on, on YouTube or good books on communicating. I mean, God knows there's plenty when you look around. Yeah, becoming more confident. Well, if you were, if we're talking about confidence mm. and you're interested in reading, my book is finally out. So if you want to read Three Wines In, How to Have oh. Self-Confidence Today and Achieve What You Want in All Areas of Your Life Without the Hangover Tomorrow, head on over to HillarySaxton.com. HillarySaxton.com for and, your and copy. It's, and we haven't officially launched it yet, but anyway, no. people in this community can buy it. If you are interested, it is a fab book. I'm getting great comments and feedback already, so I'm pretty excited. But Bob, I think we're there. Okay. I think we've uh, had some great information in this podcast. Mm. So just understand that communication is important, is seen as a soft skill, but it impacts your outcome. And just be better at it. Yep. Okay. Well, we are done. We will see you next week for episode 112. Bye for now. Bye.